Don't watch the man stop that razor. Watch the man in the chair. He'll never be shaved. In ten seconds, he will be dead. Five, four, three, two, one. On October 25th, 1957, Albert Anastasia, one of the founding fathers of organized crime, the Lord High Executioner, with 63 murders to his credit, was himself killed in a New York barbershop. He was an easy victim because he violated Gangland's cardinal principle of survival. Never turn your back to the door. Who killed Albert Anastasia? Somewhere. Some place, someone knows. Don't watch the man mix that martini. Watch the man on the sofa. He'll never drink it. In ten seconds, he will be dead. scores of crimes committed in the United States each year that remain unsolved. An outstanding example is the murder of Albert Anastasia. Another infamous crime that remains unsolved is the basis for this week's story. It ends with the man mixing the martini. It begins with Martin Heidel, a young man on his way up in the world of crime. 1929. Charge. Narcotics. Defendant. Heidel. Dismissed. New York. 1929. Charge. Felonious assault. Defendant. Heidel. Dismissed. Thank you, Runner. I'm getting tired of being picked up every time there's a push on. I get an idea. Maybe I'll leave. Take my business someplace else. The Chamber of Commerce will scream. He did take his business someplace else, to the sunny shores of Southern California. He was always seen in the right places at the right time, attended all the motion picture premieres, and within a few short years made friends with prominent and successful people in the film capital. His luxurious show place was a meeting place for show people. None of them knew that he was the district manager in charge of the Western Division of organized crime. Gloria, let's get the drink circulating. Say, incidentally, if B and I are taking our boat out next week, now how about sailing down to Ensenada with us? Oh, we'd love to have you. And Gloria, too. Well, sure, if Gloria's free and would like to. I'll make a point of it. Well, let's settle that. Ah. Thank you. Martini? Oh, thanks. You know, this is the way I always dreamed it would be. You like it? Oh, I love it. I love you more. You are the nicest thing that's happened to me since I came out here. Let's always keep it that way. Promise? Promise. You two are joining us? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll get that to you. Good evening, Mr. Heidel. Well, what do you want, Sergeant? A few answers to a few questions. Uh, well, look, I have a guest tonight. Can't it wait? No. Well, we can talk in my tent if it's all right with you. Just so we can talk. Is anything wrong? Uh, no, nothing important, dear. Just take care of our guests. All right, what is it, Sergeant? Don't you read the papers? Race track, wire service, murder. Well, what's that got to do with me? Maybe you can tell us. You knew Iggy Dorf. Never heard of him. He ran one of the small wire services. Somebody's been moving in on them. So? So it started just about the time you came out here from New York. 
Well, does that make me kill Iggy Dorr? Maybe. Unless you can prove where you were tonight. Well, I have five witnesses right out here. I can count and I can check. Now, just a minute. I'll do it myself. Were you people with Mr. Heidel earlier tonight? Well, yes, we were at a premiere. He didn't leave at any time. No. Are you sure? Well, what's wrong? Police business. Sounds serious. Murder always is. Murder? But Mr. Heidel is a friend of mine. Are you implying... His that... good friends call him Muggsy. Harry, get over here right away. Important? Would I be calling you otherwise? Okay. Be right over. Everybody. They've left. Seems you've lost all your friends. And you? You've lost me, too. I, I just stayed to say goodbye. That was nice of you. Well, why didn't you tell me what you were? I'm sure Sergeant Croft filled you in. Well, he didn't, but he didn't need to. Wait. He had to lie to me. You had to pretend. All right, go ahead, run. You and the rest of your pine bitch our friends. Show me this, I'll show them all. What's the matter with her? She looks mad. Yeah. So am I. Come on, what's on your mind? Well, I wanted to talk about Iggy Dora. Now I don't. You know, Harry, there's a bunch of phonies out here. Yeah. Remember the Moroccan? That club I always wanted to build. Now I'm going to do it. I'm going to build the biggest, swankiest, lushest hotel in the country. Right across the state line, gambling is wide open and legitimate. And I'm going to put on shows that are going to make Ziegfeld look sick. Show business. We'll show them all. Yeah, but that's going to take real dough. Maybe millions. Then I'll get millions. He's out of town. Anything I can do for you? I need a couple of million. You got it? <laughs> Are you kidding, Muggsy? Now, only my friends call me Muggsy. Why don't you introduce me to your friend? Uh... Catherine Mills, Martin Heidel. I've heard a lot about you. I'm willing to hear a lot about you. I'll give you the story of my life. Mugsy. Oh, the kind of money I want has got to come from New York. I'm going to call Mr. B. Are you kidding? It's three hours later there. It's nearly morning. Well, the boys work late. See who that is, will you? Hey, look what you got. I've come with my story. 
Remember you. He said so. Fix the lady a drink, Harry. I'll be right back. Hello. Well, hello there. How are you? Smugsy. Say, this is what I call mental telepathy. Is Mr. B in? He wants to talk to you. Save me the price of a call. Hello, Muggsy. What's on your mind? I need some backing for a gambling joint I want to build. Now, it should make a mint. You think I can make an arrangement with you and the boys? I don't see no problem. Happy to do you a favor. And say, well, I got you on the phone. Maybe you can do me a favor. Oh, well, sure. Sure, Mr. B. You remember Big Mo? He's wanted as a witness. Mo's running around hiding. Writing me letters for money. Or else he says he's going to sing. I don't recall owing that canary any money. Where is he? I understand he's out in California somewhere. And I'd appreciate it if you kind of ask him not to write no more. Tell him Mr. B don't like letters. Tell him Mr. B likes canaries even less. I'll tell him. Need any faces? I could use a couple of strange ones. You got them. Strange faces are not readily identified by the local police. So Pine Tree Knox and another torpedo from Mr. B's organization were sent to help Muggsy convince Big Mo to stop writing and breathing. Now, Big Mo is holed up here. Now, the word is that he's sneaking out for Thanksgiving dinner about 9 o'clock. Now, that's when we'll hit. I want you to pick up a car. Hot off the street? Right. Just be sure that it can travel fast. It's painted plain, something that won't attract attention. Yeah, I've been there before. Now, we'll meet on the corner of Big Mo's hideout at a quarter of nine tonight. And we'll get him before he gets to the gobbler, huh? Right. And what happens to our Thanksgiving dinner? We'll have it, sweetie. Right after the turkey shoots. Only this time. The turkey is a canary. Thanksgiving. Some people have already had their traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Some haven't. The men in this car haven't. The man in this car hasn't. You take the car that I drove. It's clean and legit. If we pick up a tail or the cops chase us, crash them. Make it look like an accident. After the job, both of you hop a plane, get out of town, get lost. Thanksgiving. All is in readiness for, as Pine Tree put it, the turkey shoot. There's Big Mo. Right on time. Good. I won't have to keep Catherine waiting. later and the Moroccan hotel has been built. Every time a new lead in the Big Mo murder was uncovered, Muggsy was invariably picked up, but invariably released. No witnesses. It always ended up the same way, with Muggsy back doing business at the same old stand. Harry, get here yet? 
In the den. Oh, I missed you, sweetie. I missed you, too. More. Mm -hmm. oh, Harry's waiting for me. Let him wait. Uh, I've got to find out what's been going on. I don't trust anybody. There's still plenty of money left. Isn't there? You look pale. Oh, I feel fine, fine. Anything new? Same old story. How are things? Good. Good. We got a nice piece of all the wire services on the West Coast. Except for one guy. Who? Moon. Well, who's he? He's a nobody. Okay. He won't give, see that he receives. Anything else? Yeah. Well, come on, come on. What else? The Moroccan. What about it? Looks like he made a mistake on that one. I don't think so, Harry. Well, what I mean is, as fast as we get any dough, you sink it right back into that hotel. It's draining you. I'll make that pay off. Don't you worry about that. On your way out, send Catherine in, will you? <laughs> Muggsy lately? Not a whisper. Yeah, he always keeps mum when he's worried most. Think he's worried about that hotel of his? So am I. If he doesn't get some money up, the boys are going to be annoyed at Muggsy. They just might be annoyed at us, too. We don't want that, do we, Sally? You think maybe somebody should go out and talk to him? You're a convincing talker. Don't look so angry. You know I've always had my heart set on seeing Europe. Yeah. Well, what's there to see? Just a bunch of foreigners. Besides, I need some new clothes. Paris is a good place to shop. Oh, come on. There are plenty of good stores right here. But, sweetie, I like the boat trip. And whatever Catherine likes, Catherine gets. Stay out of this, Harry. Anyway, I need a vacation. I can't stand watching you mope all the time. I'm not moping, but I got a right to worry. When are you going to be back? When you stop worrying. And when you do, you can wire me some money in Paris. Goodbye, Muggsy. It's a great layout, isn't it? Hey, why didn't you let me know you were coming? I just thought I'd drop in. Well, too bad you just missed Catherine. Yeah, I know. Uh, how are things in New York? Come on, take a seat, Sally. Sit down. So-so. Is this a pleasure trip? Uh, not exactly. Some of the boys are sort of wondering. What about? About the three million bucks they invested in a Moroccan hotel. Well, I'm good for it. What's a few lousy bucks between friends? Well, that's one way to look at it. Then there's another. What other? It's a long time, and we still haven't seen no dough yet, Muggsy. Oh, you will, you will. Come on, let's have a drink. Well, we're through talking. 
<laughs> We're through. Look, business at the Moroccan is a little slow, but it'll pick up. The boys will get the dough, and then everybody will be happy. Because everybody would be happier if they had a little something more tangible. Know what I mean? No. What do you mean? You're under the wire services. Those I keep. You understand? No hard feelings. But I thought you wanted everybody to be happy. No dice. That's the way you want it? That's the way I want it. Well, guess I can just catch my plane back to New York. Uh, Sally! Uh, let me drive you back to the airport. Well, I got a car waiting. used to meet. City of flower-scented air. A vacation playground. But some who came here came here on business. A board meeting is about to take place. The directors are waiting for the chairman of the board. Lucky! Hello, Lucky! Good to see you again. How was the trip? Uh, coming over, it's good. Going back, not so good. <laughs> you ought to see us oftener. Well, the man with the whiskers got different ideas. It's like old times, huh? <laughs> well, come on, let's get out with you. Well, what's on the agenda? Ah. Moroccan Hotel. Muggsy's doing good for us, huh? We sank three million bucks into that pet hotel project of his, but he's not paying off a penny. Two weeks ago, Green here went out to talk to him. Reasonable? But all he got was conversation. No money? No. Why not? Well, Sally said that... We let Mr. Green make his own report. Well, like Mr. B says, I went out unexpected-like and dropped in on Muggsy. I offered to give him a chance, but he didn't take it. What'd he say? Well, he says we'll pay back the loan. He doesn't want us to worry. But that was nice of him. Then what? I suggested something tangible. Like his end of the wire services. He backed right off. Here's the way we see it. Please, Mr. Baroni, Mr. Green still has the flaw. Continue. Muggsy's a liability to the extent of three million in the Moroccan hotel. He can be an asset. His piece of the wire services will more than cover our losses. Anything else? That's all. Thank you, Mr. Green. Now, Mr. Baroni. You got something to say? My feeling is that Muggsy's overworked. He's suffering from nervous exhaustion. Maybe he should take a vacation. Retire like. You make the motion? I make it. It is moved that Muggsy Hydell be retired. Anybody second? I second it. We now put it to the vote. Board votes unanimous. Muggsy Idell is retired. Don't watch the man mix that martini. Watch the man on the sofa. He'll never drink it. In ten seconds, he will be dead. Five, four, three, two. So, with nine shots through a window, Martin Muggsy Heidel paid his debt to the underworld. On June 20th, 1947, 
It was nine shots through a window that killed Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, a charter member of organized crime. Did he owe a debt to the underworld? Were the events you just saw, the events that led up to the murder of Bugsy Siegel, who killed Bugsy Siegel? Somewhere, someplace, someone knows. The bullet holes become history, as does the murder of Bugsy Siegel. As long as it remains unsolved, the police files on it remain open. As long as it remains unsolved, it must be construed as a victory of crime against the people. But that victory can be turned into defeat. Who killed Bugsy Siegel? Somewhere, someplace, someone knows.